tonight on Buffy. I'm the vampire slayer. You have to trust someone. You trust me. Her destiny is to destroy the evil ones. This is my fight. Stop saying that. Demons swore to kill the slayer. We're playing straight into their hands. I can handle this. But this time, the chosen one may not be the one they're after. It is a trap. Just isn't for her. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, next Monday. Hello, and welcome back to Slade, the Buffyverse Revisited. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Jeremy. I'm your other host, James, and welcome to Season 2. That's right, Season 2, baby. We made it. We did. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> season 2 of uh, both Buffy and uh, Slade, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, season 2, probably, uh, definitely one of, if not, my favorite episode uh, or season of the series. Yeah, mine's either mine's either two, this one or three. I, I really like three also. So yeah, three's um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't three's which one is my favorite, but yeah, I, I love seasons two and seasons three. So yeah, this ought to be a good ride coming up. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I I've already, uh, you know, season one. I pretty much um, would watch the episodes. Um, on a week by week basis in preparation for, you know, recording the show. But uh, I, <laughs> I couldn't stop after the season premiere. I, I'm, I think I'm on Inca Mummy Girl now. Yeah, which I is think like I'm, episode four or something. <laughs> yeah, I watched up to uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the third one. Um, um, parts something parts. Uh, 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 school Hard is the third yeah, one, I believe. Yeah, there you go. School Hard. Yeah. Because um. I believe it's it's uh, um, when she was bad. Some assembly required school and hard. School hard, yeah, school uh, hard. Where I didn't finish school hard, but I got about halfway. Gotcha, gotcha. So, how'd you spend uh, our time away from uh, recording? Basically, doing nothing. Um, I mean, working around the house and doing things here and. Uh, Yada yada, you know, nothing nothing fun, nothing cool like what you did. <laughs> what was uh, yeah. that, James? Uh nine nine days uh in Italy. Over in Italy. Little uh vacation. Listen, it it was fun, but I will say I'm forty one years old. I'll be forty two in a few months. This is the first time I've ever actually taken any kind of vacation. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Even growing up as a kid, you you guys you didn't do that. Nope. Vacations wow. growing up as a kid were you know weekend trips to Michigan to visit grandma and grandpa. Yeah, gotcha. that that kind of thing. So. Gotcha. So. But yeah. most of my uh, growing up, uh, we pretty much always did Florida. We went to Florida and we'd go to Disney World and uh, the beaches and stuff like that, so, which I loved. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But as a, as an adult, I've done absolutely nothing and gone absolutely nowhere. So, yeah. yeah. A little different when you're an adult and you got to foot the bill. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 100%. Ooh. 100%. Um, 100. Yeah. Which is why yeah, I've, my, one of my best friends and I have already started planning uh, a trip to Ireland for next year. You know, yeah. cause it's like, you know, it, it's definitely not a spur of the moment kind of decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's something you definitely got to. Yeah. That's something you definitely have to right. plan up. I, I've heard that, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, airline tickets. I've heard those are absolutely astronomical right now. So yeah, it's, it's insane, but in the membrane, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, it, it was nice. It was a nice uh, a couple of, what, what was it, about two months we've taken off there for our summer vacay? Uh, it was pretty close to that. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty close. Pretty close to two months. I don't, uh, I don't, you and I talked a little bit the other day. I think that's something, um, I know that's something people would be uh, shocked to find out because the couple of people I have mentioned it to is that you and I don't, like, we don't talk a whole lot. Uh, yeah, in being, between being in completely different states, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, like we don't we don't really uh, chit chat a whole lot outside of uh, 
uh, when it comes time to to record and you know sporadic messages um so i just i mentioned that because uh uh i brought it up to a couple people within the last you know week or so and they were like really you guys don't don't talk more often than that i'm like no I'm like i really haven't talked to jeremy since we finished recording the uh the episode for the movie <laughs> yeah yeah the, the watch along yeah i had to, yeah. i had to recuperate from that <laughs> yeah I, was, um, I had to check into i had to check into a to a rehab facility after that <laughs> but uh uh, I also mentioned it too because you and I did talk uh, briefly yesterday. Um, I don't, uh, I don't anticipate our uh, future breaks being quite that long. No, you know, no yeah, two yeah. months. You know, yeah, I think I think you came up with with a good plan, which you know, because from now on we're we're dealing with twenty one or twenty two episodes. Twenty two episodes, season. yeah. And um, so I think the the plan you came up with I think would be the best, which is. Uh, uh, you know, do half, do eleven episodes, and then uh, take a week, and then is that what you said a week? Uh, two weeks, or do take it. two weeks, yeah, and then um, come back to the final half of the season, you know, and right. uh, and take a month away. Yeah, take a month away, and because that's another thing I think a lot of people would would be surprised by, which is you know this this actually is a lot of work, and not just the podcast, but you know watching all the episodes, taking notes, you know, I've got seven pages of notes for this episode, for instance, and, you know, right. it, and back pull clips and, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So after, after about 11, 12, 13 episodes or so, it's, you start getting burned. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, we, okay. We, I'm ready for a break. <laughs> we, we were both, we were both definitely ready for that, uh, for that break. Oh once yeah. We, yeah. Once we wrapped them, well, you were ready for the break before we wrapped recording on the watch along for the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was ready for the break pre uh, watch along. Uh, uh, but yeah, I stuck yeah. it out for our uh, fans. You did. you did, but yeah, that's uh, you know, uh, twelve, thirteen episodes all in a row like that. It was it was starting to take its toll a little bit. Oh yeah, as, plus, as much you know, plus as, with us with us being new to podcasting, you know, so. Right. Right. Um, um, we didn't really know what we were getting into when we started this, and right, uh, it's um, great. I absolutely love it. But yeah, we definitely. Oh yeah, we definitely I, need breaks about every eleven or twelve episodes. Right. <laughs> and that's what I was just gonna say. Like you know, we I, don't get us wrong. Obviously, we love the show. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't, and we enjoy getting together and and talking about it like this. But it 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 definitely was uh, <laughs> was yeah. pushing pushing. Uh, some buttons towards the end there <laughs> yeah stretching stretching some uh some nerves thin it's like oh if i have right. to watch one more of these bad season one episodes i'm gonna throw myself out the window <laughs> yes but we're into season two now and uh as as much as we both agree that season one kind of really hit the ground running and and what the show wanted to be and and you know setting expectations for it uh I I really think season two kind of coalesced itself into uh, the show everybody really uh, enjoys the show that uh, comes to mind when when you bring up uh, Buffy to fans. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. It is definitely the show that it it becomes in this in this season. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because to me, I could tell right away with the begin with with season to you know the, the the opening minutes of this episode that you know i was like oh wow yeah now it's starting to look a lot more like you know the show i remember right the, uh, yeah exactly it's it's looking more like the show we're remembering it's sounding more like the show we're remembering um you know this is a season that uh i i know in particular you're looking forward to uh once school hard rolls around because there's uh, uh, there's uh, uh, character introductions that I know you're particularly fond of. Oh yeah, um, but <clears throat> but in general, season two definitely uh, gives us some talent in front of the camera, uh, actors and actresses uh, as characters that are very loved by fans, uh, and talent behind the the camera and in the writers' room too. Marty Noxon comes on as a writer this season. Uh, David Fury comes on as a writer this season. 
um it it's really a lot of a lot of the names that fans really associate with the show and and uh uh, uh names that are are f- fan favorites so yeah yep yeah this yeah you know we can say it to death but yeah it definitely the the show definitely becomes definitely comes into its own with the second season oh yeah and you're yep. just like okay yeah this is the show i remember <laughs> yeah all right uh if you're ready i'm going to jump right into some dates and deets here let's do some dates and deets james all right uh as previously stated stated this is buffy the vampire slayer season two episode one um and i'm actually gonna uh right off the bat here uh rattle off some uh behind the scenes stuff uh for season two as a whole um that's not episode specific it's stuff that's gonna affect uh, the whole season um and first amongst those is that uh david boreanaz is upgraded to series regular and is added to the opening credits uh here in, in season two um christoph beck replaced walter murphy as uh the show's composer so all the original uh scores and uh soundtrack stuff for the show is done by him now um and the second season began filming six months after filming wrapped on season one wow i didn't know that yeah um which uh i mean seems to be fairly standard turnaround time um Mm. in the in the industry Really? Um, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I I I felt like it might have been a little bit shorter because uh as we talked about in season 1, we only got 12 episodes because it was a mid-season replacement. Right. So um you would think there it would be a shorter turnaround time between when filming ended and when filming began um to try and make that second season premiere. Yeah. uh our episode yeah, title you know, oh go ahead. i was just oh, gonna no, say go that um it, i always thought it was you know it was a little longer honestly between i figured you know they would get like a year or so maybe not quite a year nine ten months or so um yeah. but yeah man six month turnaround whoo yeah you think we were burned out podcasting <laughs> They must have been right. burned out, and, right. and they all looked. They all changed so much in that six months. If you if you noticed, uh, to me at least, you know, yeah. all, the, all the actors and actresses. Um, you know, I don't know what anyone else really had going on at that time, but I know um, SMG um, had changed her hair for filming of. Um, I believe it was I know what you did I last know summer. Did last summer, yeah. Um. So so yeah, there is definitely a a change to her look. Um, uh, as far as everyone else, I really don't know what they had going on, um, yeah. in, be- in, in between filming. I don't know that any of them had really kind of, uh, taken off to the extent that SMG did, you know, I think that- Anthony, St- Anthony Stewart head went back to the UK and was, was doing, uh, stage stuff. Okay. I that mean, I, that's sense. what he did a, a lot of before right. or after, so. Right. Um, so, but, and Armin Shimmerman, he, we know what he was doing. He was back on DS9. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, a lot of the other, a lot of the other people, I do not know. Yeah. All right. Uh, our episode title is "When She Was Bad," directed by He Who Shall Not Be Named, <laughs> and, uh, and our episode credited writer is also He Who Shall Not Be Named. Uh, Our original air date was September 15th, 1997, on the now-defunct WB Network. Man, 1997. 1997. Uh, Our regular cast, as always, includes Sarah Michelle Gellar as Buffy Summers, Nicholas Brendan as Xander Harris, Allison Hannigan as Willow Rosenberg, Charisma Carpenter as Cordelia Chase, David Boreanaz as Angel, and Anthony Stewart Head as Rupert Giles. Our guest stars for this week's episode include Kristen Sutherland as Joyce Summers, Dean Butler as Hank Summers, Robio Lamort as Jenny Callender, Armin Shimmerman as Principal Snyder, Andrew J. Furchland as the Anointed One, Brent Jennings as Absalom, and Tara 
I'm sorry, Tamara Braun as Tara. Yeah, and I could not figure out who that was, and I guess that's the female vamp that they torture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, I who what who is that? <laughs> um, our episode synopsis reads: Xander and Willow worry about Buffy's behavior. Cordelia and Miss Calendar are kidnapped, and Buffy turns Angel away. Ah, well, uh, my <laughs> IMDb uh, synopsis goes like this. Buffy returns from summer vacation sporting an attitude and suffers from recurring nightmares involving the Master. Meanwhile, the Anointed One and his followers plot their revenge. Which I think that's a pretty good... That is a pretty, a pretty good, good one. Yeah. I think that lays it out better than, than yours did. Yeah, I'm, as discussed uh, during the first season, I'm, I have no idea where. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these synopsises are like fan source synopsises. Yeah, uh, sometimes I wonder about some of the ones you, you, you end up getting because I'm thinking, yeah. did they even watch the episode? <laughs> or did yep. they just like look at the title and like come up with a with a, you know. Right, and I'm going to continue to use them because I think they're hysterical compared oh, yeah. to, yeah. to the, the the much better ones. And I'm kind of I I think we've talked about this before. I'm surprised that the ones on IMBD are so good because those on other shows those tend to be very they wacky. Be, they tend to be hilariously bad. Yeah, but so far, like if if I remember correctly from season one, they've been pretty spot on. Yeah, and they're yeah. starting out that way too. Um, before we get started, I want yeah. to bring up something about dates and deets. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but Sean Lennon was in this episode. Was he? Yeah, uh, J- uh, John Lennon's and Yoko Ono's son. Uh huh. Yeah, he was he was one of the band members. I believe he was the keyboard player in the band. Oh, for um, and the bronze, uh, Chibo, uh, Chibo Mato. Yeah, uh, okay. he was either the he was either playing the bass or he was playing the keyboard. I can't remember which one. Interesting. Uh, that was Sean Lennon. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And he was uncredited. So, all right. I found that huh. interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to jump in right here with our opening scene, which. Uh, is a cemetery. And of course. Of course. Of course. Um, this actually, a little little fun tidbit, um, this begins the tradition of every season premiere going forward, opening in a cemetery. Yep. yep. So, uh, so we open in a cemetery and we see that um, um, just outside the cemetery, Willow and Xander are... Uh, walking together uh, on their way home and Xander has an ice cream cone and they're playing a little game where one of them uh, gives a movie quote and the other person has to name the movie Uh, and they're going back and forth with that and uh, uh, so they get tired of that and um, they start complaining about how the summer's been very boring. And uh, um, Willow's like, yeah, but on the plus side, there haven't been any monsters or anything. And uh, Xander says he's so restless. He's can't wait. He's even looking forward to school starting again. Yeah. And uh I don't think I ever said that as ever <laughs> growing up. Not one no. ever, not one time. No. And of course, Willow, you know, is like, you know, that wouldn't happen to have anything to do with a certain girl we both know who is a vampire slayer. And Xander, you know, rebuffs her. He's, you know, I'm over that. I don't even care. Um, and then, of course, he's like, but. Did she happen to mention when she's coming back? And Willow said that Willow says that she hasn't heard from her. She got a a couple postcards from her when she first went uh, back to L.A. for the summer, but then hasn't heard from her since then. And uh, um, Xander says, well, she's probably having a good time with her dad. And 
Willow once again is like, and you don't care. And he's Xander's like, well, there might be some interest. I'm a man. I have certain desires, certain needs. Just a continuation of Xander being a complete chode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so then they go back to the movie game and um, Xander starts quoting from Witness and he uh, he ends up booping Willow on the nose with his ice cream cone. And uh, um, she complains that her nose is cold and he leans in to lick it, lick the ice cream off of her nose. And of course it turns into a, a very flirty situation. You know, they're gazing into each other's eyes and uh, longingly. Right. And he brushes her cheek and they're clearly getting ready to go in for a kiss. And before I go on, I just want to say this may become a Xander Harris slander podcast (laughs) (laughs) because this dude, like, I don't know. Like literally two sentences ago, he was clearly still pining for Buffy to come back. Yeah. And now he's getting ready to to mac on Willow. Yeah. Well, uh, he does get his come up and uh, later, so uh Yeah, that's true. Um so again, they're getting ready to <clears throat> ready to kiss. And but Xander pulls back and he sees a vampire standing opposite them right on the other side of the wall <laughs> like right he's like right he's, he's, he's literally yeah. right there breathing in their mouths yeah when they show him and i'm like oh god <laughs> like like how he didn't how neither one of them didn't you know. notice that until xander was like whoa maybe we shouldn't do this or yeah. whatever was going through his mind xander pulls away and that guy's nose hairs are like touching willow's cheek i'm like what the hell right like if nothing else like you didn't like you didn't smell the dead guy standing right <laughs> or the, there and he's got to have dead guy breath Right. You know? Oh, wait. Well, no, vampires don't no, have... No, vampires don't breathe, so... Still, but, you know, he's got to have, like, that mouth funk odor, you know? Right. Or, or just the idea that I'm pretty sure most people can tell when someone is standing, like, <laughs> three centimeters literally, from them. Literally right. like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> uh, Xander notices him. Willow notices Xander noticing him. Yeah. Looks at the vampire, lets out a scream, uh, jumps off the wall. Xander pulls her away, tells her to go, puts himself in between her and the vampire. She, of course, doesn't go. Xander slugs the vampire in the face. Of course, the vampire is not phased. And he grabs Xander, tries to bite him. They're struggling back and forth. And uh, all of a sudden, a hand grabs the vampire on the shoulder, pulls him up off Xander, and proceeds to beat him up and karate toss, fight. Yeah, <laughs> toss him uh, onto his back. And the person turns to Willow and Xander, and it's Buffy. And like, hey guys, yes, uh, the vampire gets up. He and Buffy start tussling again. She sends him flying into a tree, and he gets impaled on a branch. And yeah, she kicks him, and he flies fourteen feet in the air. <laughs> it's a, hits a perfectly placed tree with jutting branch, sharpened branches. And uh, but they, uh, but it's a dusting on screen. So there's it five is, Gs. It is. Cha-ching! We got that season two money, baby. Yeah, they did because there's a lot of there's a lot of effects in this episode. Yes. So they were um, spending, they were writing checks, buddy. <laughs> uh, and he, of like you said, he dusts, bursts into ashes, and she turns back to Willow and Xander and says, "Miss me? Roll credits." Yep, that's the cold open. That is our cold open. Much, at least this episode, <clears throat> you know. Much tighter, more concise, uh, cold open. You yeah. Know? Whereas before, they could be these really weird, lingering, trailing, and you're like, "Wait, does the show start?" And then all of a sudden, it'd be like, "Blip, cut." You know, cold open credits. Right. So yeah, they're 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 kind of getting in the groove. You can tell. Yeah. Already. Yep. 
So when we come back from what would have been uh, commercials, Xander and Willow, they're thrilled to see Buffy back, especially Xander. He immediately goes up and basically gropes her, uh, hugs her, and then Willow hugs her, and then Xander hugs her again. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's still that guy. Um, um. and then she's kind of like, you know, what are you guys doing out here? You know, I figured you nerd or you, lo- you losers would would be out here, and you don't have crosses or stakes or anything. And you know, Xander Xander proceeds to tell her that it, this this is the very first vampire they've seen since she killed the master. And I was kind of like, you know, personally, I was watching and I was like, wow, really? So you're talking what three, four months or so there, and and. No signs of amps on the hell mouth, so that was kind of interesting. I mean, um, uh, how long? Uh, you know, <laughs> this sounds terrible. It's been so long. How long does summer vacation even last? Well, for let's see. When I was a kid, we would get out of school in. Uh, oh crap! When was it? Uh, May, May, like the end of May. Uh huh. See the end of May, and then we'd go back like the very end of August or beginning of September. Okay. Yeah. That's not, that like seems three months, right. something like that. Yeah. About yeah. three months or so. That seems right. And, um, so yeah, I mean, Hey, three months in Sunnydale with no vamp sightings. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and Buffy's like, yeah, well, of course they must've known I was back. And, uh, um, so the, you know, they, they, they go on to ask her, you know, how was her summer and stuff? And she was, uh, you could tell that she enjoyed it. Um, because she's like, yeah, it was free of slaying and did a lot of shopping and, you know, basically the life she wishes she, she had. Right. Uh, instead of being the slayer <laughs> <clears throat> and then asks, you know, if they had any fun and <clears throat> sorry, uh, Willow says, yeah. And Xander says no at the same time. And uh, uh, the only exciting thing Xander can remember uh, doing is bearing the master's bones with Giles. And and uh, Willow's like, yeah, yeah, we got to wear robes, too. And uh, they consecrated the ground and, you know, during this ceremony and whatnot. And uh, she, they're like, yeah, we, we buried him right over there, you know, under that tree there in the cemetery. And she kind of looks over and. Um, she gets a strange look on her face and, um, uh, Willow's like, so have you gone to see Giles? And Buffy's just acts like that's a crazy question. She's like, no, why would I do that? I'll see him at school. And, uh, so you, you know, in this, this whole exchange, you can tell already that something's off with Buffy. Like she, yeah. she seems, I don't know if distanced is distant is the word, but she just seems kind of, um. Uh, I don't even know what the word is. She just seems off, you know, yeah. with, with that way. She doesn't yeah. seem like her jovial Buffy self. Right. You know? And I think, uh, I think it's particularly noticeable. Um, and like when Willow asks her about Giles. Yeah. 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 Especially. Yeah. Cause she's just like, she acts like it's nonchalant, like, no, you know, I'll see him at school, but it's almost more, it comes across more like she does not want to see right. him or talk right. to him. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's odd. I'll, I'll, I'll do this, jump to this next part. Um, yeah. then we, we zip to Buffy's house and, um, both of her parents are in her bedroom, uh, unpacking, um, well, mom is unpacking and, and dad is uh, pulling up. She, he pulls up a suitcase and says, okay, I think this is the last one. And um, which we failed to mention, she had told them that, that her dad had just brought her home and, and uh, yeah. And that that's how she found, she decided to come and look for the Xander and Willow. And, but anyway, so they're, they're uh, mom is unpacking and she's floored by all these new clothes and, and she mentioned something about, you know, how much did you buy her? And he's like, well, does this suitcase is just shoes? Does shoes count as clothes? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, he spent a lot of money and she spent a lot of time shopping. And, um, he, you know, he tells her, tells us, tells uh, Joyce that 
you know, he was, she was kind of distant over the summer, not brooding or anything like that, but just, just distant and, um, kind of felt like she wasn't there. Like they weren't having their normal, um, you know, connection, summertime connection. And, um, you know, Joyce is kind of like, yeah, I know what it's like to deal with a distracted Buffy. And, uh, uh, she asks, you know, did he, did, 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 did she behave herself basically over the summer? And he's like, yeah, actually she was, you know, totally fine. Not, no problems at all. And he's like, at least when she was burning down schools, I, I knew what to say, what to, what to do, what to, you know, he's like, but with this situation with her just being distant, you know, and kind of closed down, he, he just, he didn't really know what to do. And, um, mom says, she, mom says she just hopes Buffy can make it through the school year. Yes, and that cuts to Sunnydale High, where we see Cordy and two of her cordettes walking through the courtyard, and she's telling them, uh, she's like, uh, it was a nightmare, it was a total nightmare, and she says, they promised they'd take me to St. Croix, and then they just decided to go to Tuscany. <laughs> and oh, so how she's terrible. So she's complaining about how her parents took her to Tuscany for summer vacation instead of St. Croix. And uh, uh, that cuts us to um, Principal Snyder and Giles. They're also walking through the courtyard and and uh they're talking and and Snyder's basically complaining about how the campus is being overrun with with children sure. everywhere. <laughs> uh, he you know refers to them as locusts and yeah. And uh <laughs> Giles is like, you know, uh since you hate kids so much, you you ever thought maybe principals is like, you know, what you should really be doing? Yeah, and he's like, well, somebody's got to watch them. Yeah. Um, and then he spots uh, Jenny, Miss Calendar. Uh, Giles does. And uh, um, they start talking, and Snyder's still going on. And he's like, you see the way these kids gaze at each other, all moony. And it's very much how Giles and Jenny are engaging with each other uh, at the moment. And uh, they, they walk off still talking and uh, um, Snyder keeps going. He doesn't even realize they're gone. Um, And uh, he, he finally realizes or no, he doesn't realize that he's talking to himself. It just, no, he never does. No, he uh, he's talking about how talking to the students. He might as well just be talking to himself, yeah. um, without realizing that he is talking to himself. Yeah. Um. So we cut inside Sunnydale High, and we're in the hallways, and uh. uh Giles and Jenny are talking about their summers and um, uh, Jenny's talking about how she went to Burning Man and uh, did drum rituals and sculptures and naked mud dances. And Giles is like, I can't imagine finding any redeeming. And then he stops and he's, he's like, yeah. naked? <laughs> yeah, naked? You say naked? Um. And uh, uh, she, she's, you know, like, I you, I suppose you spent all summer with your nose in a book. And he's like, you know, yeah, you probably think that's really dull. And she's like, depends on the book. Um, Which I was I, like, what did, is, did she mean? Like, 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 what does she mean by that? Like knowing Jenny, like the Kama Sutra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's see. That's what I. That's kind of what I took. Lies. She being kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was like, is she talking like Playboy or you know what? What are we talking? About? Uh, at that point, Willow and Xander come down the stairs with uh, Buffy in tow, and Willow 
uh, and Xander see Giles and they're they're excited to see him and um <laughs> Xander calls Giles G Man and G Man Giles like don't ever call me that. <laughs> he's like smiling, he's like, Okay, never call me that again. Um uh, uh Willow and and Jenny exchange pleasantries and Buffy finally kind of shows up to the rest of the group and um Giles asks her how she's doing and you know she's says live and kicking and but there's still that that off that kind of distance about Buffy um and uh Willow <laughs> very loudly Willow's like Buffy killed a vampire last night yeah I like they all look around to see if anyone heard and you know Buffy's like you know a little louder I don't think everyone heard you you know Speaks and Willow for him. <laughs> yeah and Willow apologizes and um Jenny questions the fact that there's vampires and she says she thought the hellmouth was closed and Giles corrects her and says it was closed but it's not gone the the mystical energy you know still concentrated in this area and uh you know Xander's like which means it, we're still the undead's favorite party town yeah um but of course Giles being Giles wonders aloud if they're here for any particular reason or purpose and Buffy, very snarky, snarkier than usual, Buffy says to him, you're the watcher. I just work here. Yeah. And uh, Giles says he'll consult the books. And uh, Xander, Xander gives him a little bit of crap about, you know, it's like eight minutes and uh, 33 seconds. Uh, and he said it would be 10 before giles would say he'd have to consult his books yeah so yeah um, his willow pays up and i noticed it was a dollar yeah it was a bet so um the bell rings and um they all start making their way to their class and um giles stops buffy and um he's like you know i i realize you just got back but we should start your training again um and uh buffy says she's ready and she'll see him after school and he's like you know i understand if you want want to take a few days and she cuts him off and says she's ready and leaves yeah she's she's just like no 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 i'm ready i'm we'll see you after school and it's like i i would like to point out that we are introduced to a new location in the school yes we are here, that's going to become prominent uh through this season and if i remember correctly into season three it, it is the student lounge <clears throat> yeah the student lounge because you know that was totally a thing at my school too right which yeah. and it's 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 literally just like a common area with some chairs and couches in in a, yeah. a hallway at the school yeah like in the middle of a hallway it looks <laughs> yeah. like so yeah. weird like and they're just, people are just walking by. I'm looking at them like, what the hell are you just sitting there for? <laughs> like, in the middle of the hall. Right. Like, why the fuck are these couches here? Yeah, why are there just couches here on this little raised dais, like <laughs> in the middle of the fucking hall? But yeah. It's one of them fancy California schools. One of them California two, schools. That two Midwest boys like us wouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> Damn Californians. Uh, so yeah, then we we uh, cut to in the library. It's it's after school and Buffy's uh, training uh, training montage, and uh, no eighties uh, music though. Very difficult. I know there there needed to be like flash dance or something going on in there. So. <laughs> but yeah, she's uh she's doing acrobatics and you know um, all the standard things in a in a in a in a training montage. Uh, acrobatics and tumbling and flipping and kicking and punching and she's well at, at one point she's uh hitting the pads and that that uh giles is holding and she's uh she's working him over buddy she uh flings him yeah. into a chair at one point and he just looks up like good lord what is she's on something <laughs> and uh you can tell she's definitely into this yeah and uh 
so yeah, she continues uh, doing her thing, and and then we get to a point where she's working over one of those like training dummies, and she's hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, and he's standing off watching, and she just keeps getting faster and faster and faster, and she's just pounding it, and he's like, okay, Buffy, that's enough, and she just keeps going. He's like, that's enough, and then she kicks it and just breaks it, and it flies across the room, and uh, then she's uh, she's like. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever they they're bringing, you know. Uh, and at this point, you start realizing, okay, this is what's going on. She's, you know, you rewind to the season finale of last season, and you know, she was technically dead for a couple of minutes. The the master had killed her, and uh, she, you know, uh, Xander and Angel get her revived and everything, and she goes off and finishes him off but it, this is this stuff's obviously it's very uh ptsd ish yeah and she's yeah. not she's not dealing with it very well but you can no. tell she's she's um uh, she's definitely dealing with some shit yeah um it i think um even though i had obviously i've seen the episode before um like you said it kind of was in that the final moments of that scene with Giles when she's got her, she's got her hair, her hands in her hair and she's, she just can't stand still and she's bouncing back and forth. Like that's kind of when it, like you said, it registers like there's, she's still going through some shit from. Yeah. She's from definitely going through some, some, she's definitely going through some fight or flight there and yeah. she's chosen fight <laughs> and she's, uh, yeah. She's ready for whatever they're bringing, and yep. uh, um, and she's right to think uh, something's coming because we we cut to it looks like a an abandoned warehouse or something something along those lines, um, and there's this group of vamps. Some of them are hilarious looking, like like the one. <laughs> there's this one guy. He looks like a like a lumberjack almost, and. You know, he's they're all vamp faced, so they're all wearing the full vamp makeup, which is another thing you can tell uh, budget's been raised. Right. Um, and but he's got this he's got a mustache and it just looks hilarious because with the vamp teeth in and all that, it just I don't know. As soon as the screen, <laughs> as soon as the camera panned by him, I just busted out laughing. I was like, oh, he's got a porn stash. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, there's there's I don't know, six or eight of these vamps standing around and then there's this one who's kind of walking around in the middle of them preaching all this stuff about, you know, uh, really, I didn't even write any of it down specifically, but it was just a bunch of, you know, mumbo jumbo about the master and they're going to bring him back and they're going to follow the, this one, you know, that is, 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 uh, uh, he basically says, you know, they're going to regain, regain their footing um, by following this new hope um, who is to come in three days. And we're going to follow this one. And he turns, you know, to that, the anointed one, or as we called him last season, the annoying one. <laughs> and, uh, and he kind of, you know, what is he like seven? And he gives him this nod back. Like, yeah, I got this bro. And yeah. I'm like, Oh no, not the anointed one again. I was hoping he would, I don't know, fell into something like a gutter and couldn't get out. But the annoying one's back, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. I have I have I have thoughts about this that we'll get into in our final discussions. Okay. But uh My thought, why did they th ever think this was a good idea? This annoying one. <laughs> it was never a good idea. It was never interesting. Yeah, well, I yeah, we can save all this for the for the wrap up, but yeah. You know. Um uh do you want me to uh jump in here or you want Yeah, to go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Take it. Uh so we're once again at the student lounge. <laughs> student lounge in the middle of the hallway. Lounge, in the middle of the hallway. And uh Buffy is <laughs> upstairs. So, okay. So, let's Let's diagram this for people yeah. listening who haven't yeah. seen it. It's there's a little uh, alcove. So you've got you've got a main uh, hall running horizontally mm -hmm. off of a vertical hall, as mm -hmm. hallways tend to be. And <laughs> at the at, and 
next to the horizontal hallway is a little alcove, I would yeah. call it. Yeah. Um, not it's not huge. It, it's enough for some couches. It's enough, it's enough for our stars to hang out in. Right. It, kind of like the little couch area from Friends from in right. the front coffee shop. Right. There's some couches. There's a, a little reading desk with a lamp on it. Why <laughs> you need a lamp on a reading desk when there's fluorescent lighting <laughs> and overhead? And you're inside of a school. <laughs> right. Uh, but and there's you know some coffee tables. It, it's a little sitting area, but. In the sitting area, there is also like a raised dais in the sitting area with ca- a couch on it. And that's where Buffy is right now. And and the raised dais of this alcove sitting area for that they have that they call the student lounge. Yeah. So so that is uh, our new uh, also a sign that. Uh, the budget had expanded. We're getting some new some new set pieces. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. be utilized outside of the the gym, the the library, um, the same two halls we kept seeing last year, <laughs> and uh, and of course the 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 locker rooms, the boys and girls locker rooms. <laughs> yeah. Um. So she's on a couch. She's sitting on a couch there, like she's in her own little world, spaced out. And uh, Willow and Xander um, uh, come up, and uh, uh, they're calling to her, and no response. And um, they call to her again, and she's she responds with, "I'm fine. I'm fine." Like. They didn't even ask. They just called her. Yeah. Um, so they sit on the couch opposite of her and um, on either side. Or, no, Willow sits on the couch across from her. Xander sits down next to her. Um, and uh, uh, Willow asks Buffy what she's thinking about. And she starts to eat, eat an apple. And, you know, Buffy's like nothing. And. Xander's like, come on, we're friends. You can tell us. And um, he gets a little like snack bar out of his bag. And uh, um, she's like, you know, I wasn't thinking about anything really. And they ask what she did last night. And she said she just went to bed and had weird dreams. And um, Xander's like, well, dreams are meaningful. And. Uh, uh, Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I lost my spot <laughs> oh, in my. Um, Xander's like, you know, dreams are meaningful. And Willow's like, yeah, tell me about it. And then she starts to talk about a dream that Zan- that she had about Xander. Yeah. And uh, she's like, you know, it wasn't Xander. Uh, it, it wasn't even me. It was a friend's dream. And she <laughs> didn't she doesn't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> And Buffy's all like, I bet she doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, Giles shows up. And, uh, you know, he calls out Buffy's name and she's like, you know, she gets up and she's like, what is it? You look worried. And he tells her that um, he thinks he knows what the vampires are up to. And she's like, well, we'll deal with it. And, um, he says he hopes it's that simple and she says you know don't worry trust me um and he giles says oh i don't know i mean and then he gives a little evil chortle chuckle and he says i've killed you once it shouldn't be too difficult to do again and buffy's like what and giles (laughs) giles proceeds to backhand her yeah knocks her onto the table that's between the couches and he gets on top and he starts choking her and Xander and Willow are just sitting there munching on their apple and their, and, and their power bar and Willow's smiling at Xander and Buffy reaches up and uh, grabs Giles face and she's trying to push him off and um, she basically pulls his face off and it's the master underneath. 
-hmm. and Buffy is horrified. She's just absolutely terrified. Uh, kudos to Sarah Michelle Geller. I know we've said this before, but the the sheer terror she portrayed in just that look was phenomenal, in my opinion. And by the way, that was actually David Boreanaz playing. Well, the thanks for ruining my behind the scenes, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, she does do a good job. She's like, bah! um. Uh, where was I? Oh, and we cut to Buffy's bedroom and she wakes up. It was just a nightmare. And she looks over at her window. Very oddly specific dream, you know? What well, I, <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Like, I, I think so. I'm not a psychologist, <laughs> uh, nor do I, interpret. no, uh, nor do I interpret dreams. Uh, for oh. for a living or for fun, okay. Um, okay. but I think I think the the Giles reveal into the Master is definitely to show us that in Buffy's mind, Giles sent her to die. Right, right, yeah. Um, but I, what what I was actually referring to was there was so much. Very specific dialogue oh. with with all the other, you know. Right. That's a very detailed dream. And well, yeah, I think, uh, and I think part of that was supposed to be the the shock setup yeah. that it was yeah. a dream, you know. Right. Um. Uh, Buffy wakes up. It was all a nightmare. Um. She looks around her bedroom and over to her window, and she sits up and rubs her face and looks back at her window again and angels there all of a sudden leaning against the windowsill and she says hello and he asks if he can come in she says be my guest he asks how she is and she gets uppity with him you know she's like it's late is this a social call or you know uh or for me it's late anyway is it lunch hour for you and um he says it's not a social call and she's like let me guess uh that means grave danger gosh it's good to be home and he apologizes and says he wishes he had better news and she's like so some of your cousins are in town for a family barbecue and we're all on the menu and he tells her that the anointed one's been gathering forces somewhere in Sunnydale and he's not sure why she says she guesses she'll find out soon enough and he's like you don't sound too concerned and she says she can handle her herself and she could use a little action anyway and he tells her that not to underestimate the anointed one just because he looks like a child you know he has the power he has power over the rest of the vampires. And Don't underestimate him just because for an entire season and this episode, he's been completely useless and powerless and has done nothing. Right. Don't um, underestimate him. And he, he tells her he has power over the other vampires and that they'll do anything for him. <laughs> um, and uh, Buffy's annoyed and she's like, she's like, is that all? You know, because you woke me up from a really good dream. And she turns away from him and tucks herself back under the covers and lays back down. And um, He apologizes and says he'll go. And uh, he turns to leave and he stops and he tells her that he missed her. And uh, Buffy gets up and turns back to the room and and she's kind of incredulous and she's like she repeats what he said she's like i missed you uh but he's already gone yeah and that's the end of that scene yeah and then we cut to uh the next morning uh buff and her mom are in the car she's driving her to school and you know buffy's just utterly silent saying nothing has her big hollywood sunglasses on and <laughs> 
just looking out the window and mom says, you know, is there, is there even the slightest chance that, that you'll tell me what's wrong? And <laughs> I just found this scene odd because Buffy slowly turns to her and looks at her and just literally just stares a hole through her. And it, mom's like, okay, guess not. Mm-hmm. And th- that's that whole scene. And that we get to school and um, they're at their lockers. Uh, Xander Willow. Well, Buffy's at her locker and Xander and Willow are there talking with her. And uh, Willow's all excited to hear that Angel visited. Um, but, you know, it was, Buffy tells her, you know, it was nothing. There was nothing uh, romantic going on. Nothing like that. It was all shop talk. And. Uh, so, you know, they 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 go about walking and uh down the halls and um uh, they run into Cordelia and she comes out and she goes, Well, if it isn't the three musketeers and they're all like Buffy's like, Is that an insult? And <laughs> Zan's like, Yeah, I uh, they were cool. And she's like, Yeah, Cordelia's like, Yeah, I, I see your point and He's like, I would have went with the three students. And uh, she's like, well, anyway, I only meant that you three are always together. And um, she starts <laughs> she starts asking him about, you know, demons and vampires. Have they done anything, seen any of those during the summer? And she's just talking really loud and nonchalantly. And they're all like, you know, looking around like, shut the fuck up. What are you what are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I have to say this. Is, this is funny to me two reasons one it's a funny scene obviously it's meant to be funny it's the second time that this this joke has been played in this episode Mm -hmm. um but i think it's funny because if you'll remember i several times over the course of reviewing the first season called Mm -hmm. out the fact that they would frequently stand in open areas with other people around talking mm-hmm. at regular conversation levels about vampires and demons and shit and nobody seemed to give a fuck like nobody ever stopped and was like wait well, did you say vampires you know? right right what? nobody around was ever like wait what the fuck did you just say nor yeah. was anybody actively involved in the conversation ever like maybe we need to keep our voices down <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I'm so, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. No, I know exactly what you're saying. And Cordelia goes on to talk about, you know, how creepy and weird it was and you know, all the screaming and everything and and that the master guy creeped her out and she can't stop thinking about him. And, um, you know, w- Willow and Xander start to, you know, calm Cordelia down, like tell her you can't just be saying stuff like this and blah, 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 blah. But I have a clip. So, uh, let's just let the clip do the thing. Cordelia, your mouth is open. Sound is coming from it. This is never good. No, it's, see, we can't mention that stuff in front of other people, Buffy being the Slayer and all. You haven't been talking about our little adventure all summer, have you? Are you nuts? You think I would tell people that I spent the whole evening with you? Besides, it was also creepy, that master guy, all the screaming. I don't even like to think about it. So, your secret's safe with me. Well, that works out great. You won't tell anyone that I'm a slayer, and I won't tell anyone you're a moron. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can, as the episode's going along, you know, uh, Buffy's definitely becoming meaner and meaner. Yeah. And, uh, Cause that's, that's a, that's a, a barb she would usually not throw. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, as the episode progresses, we are seeing what, what during, as I was watching the episode, I referred to as the cordelia of Buffy Summers. <laughs> yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And it's just like, whoa, she's going downhill quickly because she would normally never insult anyone really. <clears throat> to that level and right. um because she says that and and just and just breezes right by cordelia yep and cordelia's like damn because even, at... Will, even willow and xander are like whoa right because look how you know calling back to the first se- first season first episode um 
remember we both spoke to how uh, affronted Buffy was at Cordelia's treatment of Willow. Yeah. Um, in in that hallway scene. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is definitely out of uh, out of left field for Buffy. She's being very out of pocket. Uh, yeah. At this point in the episode. So. So then we cut to uh, the bronze that night. And Xander and Willow are, are sitting at a table, and uh, they're there to see that weird band that I can't pronounce the name of. Chibo Mato. Yeah, Chibo Mato. That's it. Um, you know, Willow's kind of trying to convince Xander that something's up with Buffy, um, but he thinks she's just being paranoid. Um, he's really wanting to see Buffy. And you know he keeps he keeps turning his head and looking you know to see if she's if she's there yet. Um, he <laughs> so then she and she notices that he's not paying a whole lot of attention to her. So she uh, picks up her her cup of ice cream she's eaten and he, she quick when he's not looking she quickly puts some on her nose and then looks back up and and waits you know because she's trying to recreate that that uh, deal from the opening scene. And he finally turns and looks at her and he goes, uh, Willow, you got something on your nose. And she's like, ah, oh, shit. So she just rubs it off with a napkin and she's just like, oh, shit. Two, two things here. One, uh, another odd uh, item to add to the odd items list uh, 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 for the menu at the bronze. Mm-hmm. Ice cream. Ice cream, <laughs> yep. Uh, and two... Again, Xander just being like a complete, like, tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, uh, staring love in the face and ignoring it, and pining for someone who's he's never going to have. Right. Um. Right. Yeah. So where are we at now with with the menu? We're at cornbread muffins. Cornbread muffins, raisins, uh, raisins. Oh, uh, 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 wasn't it cr- buttery croissant? Buttery croissants. Yep, and now ice cream. Now ice cream. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Odd <laughs> menu choices, but okay. Uh, uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'll take it if you want yeah, me to. Yeah, go ahead. I up. lost my place completely. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead. We uh, um, we cut to the cemetery, uh, as. Willow's smile disappears. We dissolve uh, to the cemetery, to the tree where the master is buried. Um, There's four crosses there marking his grave. And uh, someone starts to dig and then someone else. And we come to see Absalom and the anointed one whose name is Colin. Um, and two other vampires watching the first two vampires dig. Um, and Absalom says to the two that are watching with him and the anointed one, you know, don't just stand there, dig. We have to hurry. So they get on their hands and knees and start to dig with their bare hands. hands. Yeah. And which it's like you course, didn't bring enough shovels for every what the fuck right. like there's, great vampire evil crew here right like there's four five there's six people here four of us are underlings two of us are important at least four of us should have shovels <laughs> but they brought, they brought two they brought two um and of course because the ground was consecrated their hands start to burn yeah um and the anointed one gives two fucks about their burning hands and tells them to keep digging. Oh, and did you notice he doesn't have the annoying anointed one voice? He doesn't. He just he doesn't. has a little kid voice now. Cause that, yeah. I think they also realized that that stupid 80 yard garbage voice that he had in, in season one was just dumb. So yeah, he just got a normal little kid's voice now. Yes. Um, so they all continue digging and, it's a, a shallow grave, so they find the master's skull. Very so shallow. It looked like it was about three inches. Right. Yeah. Right. Like if I jammed my finger in hard enough when it, <laughs> after it had rained, I'd, I'd hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After skull. it had rained, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and that takes us back to the bronze. Which let me let me let me let me cut you off there for a second. Sure. What? Sure. Okay, up to this point, every vampire we've ever seen who gets killed dusts. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck does the master leave behind a skeleton? Uh, I think we I think we briefly talked about this um, after we? he after he dusted when we covered Prophecy Girl. Um, we? My my theory is just is the fact that he is so old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that because it was also in in I remember reading in something later on that he was unable to assume human form anymore. That that's why he was always in vamp, uh, vamp face. Right. That that's that yeah. So, but it, that I don't know. You never see that again, and we see other old powerful. You know, I don't know. It just it annoys me. Yeah. You um. Know? But and I mean not to jump too far ahead. It, of ourselves uh, in this episode now it's obviously not so uncommon because there there is a there is a ritual that involves of vampires yeah and i'm like so okay so i guess once you hit a certain age you get to keep a skeleton (laughs) right like i don't know but but that's my my personal theory is just that the master is so old that he just he, he got he, he reached a certain level and got a talent point to spend on <laughs> right. retaining skeleton upon death right. right he he rolled he rolled 20 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I know it's just always bugged me for um, years so we're back at the bronze and buffy walks in and angel's there and he walks over to her and they say hi to each other and she's she's snarky with him and she's like so is there danger at the bronze should i beware and he's like you know it feels like i did something to upset you and that's really bothering me and she's like uh shit no, she's not like shit. <laughs> she goes, oh, <laughs> shit. She's like, oh, shit. I'm sorry, Angel. I didn't mean to make you uncomfy. My no. bad, A-boy. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I scrolled too far on my notes. No, oh, that's fine. It's I. Yeah. Um, so she's like, she tells him she's not angry and, you know, she doesn't know where he's getting that or where that's coming from. Yeah, where from. would you be getting that? Is it from the bitch vibes I've been giving you ever since you got back? <laughs> Right. Um, and Angel asks her what she's afraid of. Is it him? Is it them? And she's like, you know, could you maybe get over yourself? Yeah. And, you know, she's like, there's no us. And, you know, she's just like, I'm sorry if I was supposed to spend the summer mooning over you, but I didn't. I moved on. And then. She has the proverbial kick in the balls. She says to the living. Yeah, I moved on to the <sighs> living. And he's damn. like, damn, I am dead, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, that was cut dialogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was cut dialogue. Yeah, he's like, damn, I, I totes <laughs> am dead. Totes am dead. Shit. <laughs> Be there, bro. <laughs> um, so then... Uh, after emasculating Angel, she heads over to Willow and Xander at their table, and uh, Cordelia watches her walk by, and um, it's clear that she's like, "What the what the fuck is up with Buffy?" Yeah, like, did you mention that she shows up wearing like you know, uh, what do you call there? There's a ter- oh um, um um the the little like a little black dress, oh and like no. high heels and. No, yeah, she's I didn't, like dressed to the nines. Like, I didn't get into her hooker outfit. Yeah, she. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's basically wearing a hooker outfit. So that's why when she first shows up, everybody looks and they're all just kind of like, huh? They're like, uh, 
they're like, bitch, this is the bronze. That's not how we dress. Right. right. <laughs> Only Cordelia dresses like a hooker in the bronze. <laughs> Everyone's like, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but they have boxed raisins, ice cream, <laughs> buttery croissants, and stale-ass cornbread muffins cornbread on the menu. Muffins. And Cordelia so, Chase is our resident hooker. So, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> why are you dressed like that? Yeah. <laughs> um, you better get a box of raisins and rethink your life. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Cordelia watches her walk by, and she's clearly like, what? And, again, like, for Cordelia, of all people, to be like, what is going on with her? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, just, that's like, something. Am I a bizarro world? Right. Um, so Buffy and Willow and Xander, you know, they all say hi to each other. And, um, Willow wants to know what's wrong with Angel and Buffy's like, ah, I don't fucking know. You know, beats me. It's not <laughs> like I was just a total bitch to him for no apparent reason. Yeah. Um, so then Buffy grabs Xander by his shirt and says, Tells him, let's dance. And they go out on the dance floor. And um, Buffy, what's the best way to put it? Yeah, that's why I'm glad you've got this. Buffy dry humps Xander on the dance floor of the Bronx. Yeah. (laughs) Yep, she does. Uh, Xander got to second base. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) On the dance floor of the Bronx is what happened. I won't. Never mind. I won't even say it. I just won't even say it. Go ahead. I want you to say it now. <laughs> I was just gonna say he got to second base, but um, inside of his clothing, he completed. <laughs> it was a home. <laughs> run. And know what I'm saying? It was a. In, it was a home run in Xander's pants. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was an. What do they call that? An infield homer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Because this is what he's wanted for since. Episode one, season one, he has just been utterly entranced with this girl. And now she's literally dry humping him. So, yeah. Um, so that's going on. And uh, she gets in real close to him like they're about to kiss. And she asks him if uh, she ever thanked him for saving her life. And Which he literally did, because she was literally dead. Right. And right. he was the only one that was there that could revive her, because Angel right. has no breath. Right. Um, and he says no. And she says, don't you wish I would? And then yes. she walks away yes she does and xander is so utterly confused as much as much as i dislike xander as as much as this is my own personal xander harris slander podcast yeah this boy did not deserve that yeah he he is going home uh papa smurfed if you know what i'm (laughs) saying even outside of that this was yeah, that was that was just cold blooded. That this was just was a cold blooded, cruel. Yeah. yeah, cruel. Yeah, on Buffy's part, and not that we really need to, but let's get into why very briefly. One, okay. she knows she is one hundred and seventy five fucking percent aware of how Xander feels about her. Yep, and it's not speculation. He has told her. Yeah. At this point, she yep. knows. Two, Xander did save her life, like you pointed out. Literally. He, if it was not for Xander, she would have she would have remained dead. She yeah. would be no more of this on this mortal coil. Yep. So good on Xander. Okay. Yep. Three, she is she's using that against him. Mm -hmm. like i don't know if i'm like i guess two and three kind of go hand in hand well i say four she knows this is also a a huge um 
I, I don't even know why she's doing, but this is also a huge blow to Willow because she knows that Willow right. is in love with Xander. Right. And always and, has been. Right. And, 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 and she knows that Willow was watching all this take place on the dance floor. Yep. And it's just like, damn, you know? Yep. Yep. So yeah, she is just totally <sighs> burning her friends up, you yep. know? Yep. Like, and I, I think it's basically I, like the the worst, the meanest things she could do to either one of them. Right. Right. She's doing. And then, and like, I think the, the part that makes it really awful for me is that, is the fact that Xander did save her life. And this is, this is how she's treating him. Yeah. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. Like, I don't 100%, like, obviously I wouldn't expect or want Buffy to like jump into bed with Xander because oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 but not I mean damn she's but she's like how about and, a hug and like a thanks right like <laughs> you and, know? so just to make it clear that's not at all what I'm oh, saying no, no, she no, no, does we, not oh, she 100 percent does not owe Xander that and I've never I never wanted to see a a, a Buffy Xander uh, right romantic right. thing in this show so but to use to use the fact that she, he did save her life against him like that yeah like, this. like no not even uh, like a handshake or like you said a hug and a thanks buddy like yeah. she's literally taunting him over it this yeah is, like, this uh, is uh, you saved me l loser boy <laughs> it's right like... and and you're not gonna get anything out of it like yeah and like oh i know uh, I know. Mm. And, and like I said, in a roundabout, I mean, at the same time she's doing all this to Xander, she's doing it to Willow too. Yep. So yep. she's, I mean, she's just, right. wow. It's all like, and it, like wow. And, and again, to clarify myself, nor Jeremy expects that Xander should get anything other than a thank you for saving my life. Yeah, or even I'm, nothing I'm, at all, or just, just go on about, but to literally right. use it against. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. yeah. Because I, I mean, she's saved their lives plenty of times. So hey, we're even, right? You know, but to like use it again, wow. Yeah, and make him think like all of his dreams are going to come true, and then she's like, you know, cock block later, loser. Right. It's like wow. Um, but yeah, so she she walks away from him, and he's he's dumbfounded. He's confused. He's he's hurt. You know, uh, it's and as much as I dislike Xander, I, I don't blame the guy. This whole thing was cruel, like it, just cruel to him, cruel to Willow, cruel to Angel, like yeah. to a degree. Yeah, because uh, like, that's oh, yeah, that we forgot to mention because he's watching this also. Yep. Um, Take place. So she's just like burning everybody at once. Yep. Um she goes back to the table to the table and gets her jacket and storms out of the bronze um uh past cordelia angels just staring at her as she, she walks out um xander's still out on the dance floor upset and not sure what to do and we cut outside and buffy comes out and she's walking down the alley pretty quickly and Cordelia comes out of the bronze trailing behind her and she calls after Buffy and Buffy stops and Cordelia says you're really campaigning for bitch of the year aren't you and Buffy turns around and she's like as defending champion you nervous mm -hmm. and Cordelia tells her you know I can hold my own and you know, we've never been close, which is which is nice because I don't really like you that much. But you have on occasion saved the world and stuff. So I'm going to do you a favor. And Buffy's like, great. And that is she's like and Cordelia tells her, uh, I'm going to give you some advice. Get over it. And Buffy's like, pardon moi. <laughs> yeah. And. Willow's oh, like, <laughs> right. And Cordelia's like, whatever's causing the Joan Collins to get over it. Um, 
or deal with it. And before I go on, I want to point out that in 97, a Jones Collins reference was already outdated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, unless, there that, there unless that movie, Mommy uh, Dearest or whatever. Like, unless, unless you were our age watching the show, you had no idea who Jones Collins was. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> whenever that reference came up originally, when I originally saw this back, in, you know, in, in its original airing time, I would be, I would have been like, John, huh? Joan who? <laughs> Joan Rivers? Well, see, <laughs> I, kn- I knew who Joan Collins was. Yeah. Yeah. At, at the time. That well, you're aired, a brilliant, but... brilliant man. I am a brilliant man. That's well, true. well studied and um, uh, worldly. Yes, that is true. I appreciate you finally bringing that into the light. You are an extraordinary, extraordinary gentleman. <laughs> um, so she tells her to deal with it. Says, embrace the pain, spank your inner mop it, whatever, but get over it. Because pretty soon you're not even going to have the loser friends you've got now. Um, and Buffy tells her she should mind her own business. And Cordelia, Cordelia, or Buffy tells her it's about time she mind her own business. And Cordelia is like, it's long past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Buffy's like, you know, nighty night and turns and starts to walk away. And Cordelia calls after and she's like, I'll just see if Angel feels like dancing. And she gets snatched up by two vampires. <laughs> Yeah, right before who drag her into that. the adjacent building as yeah. Buffy storms away. And they drop her, and who's she next to? Uh, she is next to uh, Miss Calendar, Miss Jenny yep. Calendar. Who is unconscious. Yep. So now here we've got Cordelia and Miss Calendar now. Yep. In a some type of creep basement. Yep, and then we cut to the cemetery where Buffy has gone to check out the master's grave and what happens there. Well, uh, she discovers there ain't no fucking grave. Uh, There's an occupancy. Uh, She's like, and she can't believe it. She's like, the fuck? (laughs) These motherfuckers can't even get this right, you know? I just when you said there's an occupancy, I immediately envisioned like a cartoon neon sign popping up. Oh yeah, I, I said, with vacancy. an arrow that just says vacancy. Yeah, and I don't know why I said occupancy. I yeah, <laughs> should have said vacancy. My bad, guys. Uh, uh, she, so yeah, she just can't believe he's not there, and and then he just like suddenly appears um, over her shoulder, you know, with the big growl the vampire growl and she freaks but he's not really there it's it's all in her head um so then the next day uh willow xander and and giles are in the cafeteria and i noticed a funny thing well uh, you know they're as they're doing their dialogue giles had had purchased a soda out of the out of the machine and, and he, you know he cracks it open and, and as they're doing their dialogue back and forth he takes a drink and he just subtly looks at it like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't know if you noticed that, but he literally pulled the can and looked at it like, the fuck is this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I think, I think that was like so, uh, direction because when he first got the soda in the first place, I was like, why the, why? Like, cause he always drinks tea. Right. Like to me, Giles, Giles isn't a soda drinker. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so just the fact that he was getting a soda was like, to me, was like, what? That's weird. And yeah. for a moment, I was like, maybe we're in another dream sequence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next, he's going to roll up a sleeve and start tying off to shoot some heroin, you know. But and he then, just kind of just subtly looks at the can like, what the right. fuck is that? And I think I think like the that first time he's ever had soda. And I think that might have been like maybe direction from the director for or or even in the script because maybe they realized that like giles even getting a soda to the fans was gonna seem like out of place so they yeah. threw that in there to like kind of drive home the point like this isn't even giles is like nah <laughs> yeah yeah he just takes that drink and he's like it's all, like all these things go through his like i can't believe it these Americans right. drink this shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. But uh, anyway, I, ha- I had to bring that up. Um, so they're trying to convince. Based, also, based- I, I'm sorry. I think he's drinking uh, a Mr. Pibb. Oh, is that what it is? I think so. Oh, well, that's one of my that's like my second favorite drink uh, <laughs> after Dr. Pepper. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, so Willow and Xander are basically trying to convince him that that there's something wrong with Buffy, that she's possessed or something's controlling her or whatever. And he sits down and, and tells him, he's like, listen, I understand she's off. Um, but I think she's the problem is what you Americans call issues. <laughs> she has issues uh, that she needs to work through. Um, but instead, she's, you know, she's not. So uh, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of dis- they're kind of discussing the psychological aspects of what she dealt with last season, you know, dying and. You know, the whole master ordeal. And she's there. She's behind him, kind of hearing, overhearing some of this. And Xander sees her and really quickly changes uh, the topic. And um, and they never make it really clear if if she did overhear the whole conversation or any parts of the conversation or not. Because she just immediately, um, she's she looks pissed. And... Yeah. Because she tells him, you know, went to go visit the master and there is a vacancy, not occupancy. <laughs> uh, there is a vacancy. Um, what the fuck? And, you know, Giles is like, he doesn't understand. He's he's like, well, I don't know why they would take the bones. And, and basically, there's there's some type of, I guess, ritual spell. That it's can't a, be performed. Go, go ahead. It's a revivic, revivification ritual. Revivification ritual uh, that would bring that could bring said vampire back to life. And she's like, "Wow, really? You told me like when I ki- like this was over. He was dead. I killed him. I won. We won. Y- you didn't bother telling me that there was a such thing as a ritual that could bring his fucking ass back." And I was kind of like, you know, she's kind of right there. <laughs> I think I would be a little, a little miffed too. Right. And he's like, well, you know, I've never heard of one of these spells working. And she's like, yeah, but you know, basically still the, the fact that, that it even exists, you could have gave me a heads up here. Here's something. I, okay, go ahead. But before you, here's something I want to know mm-hmm. before Giles mentions the revivification Mm -hmm. ritual and you you mentioned it in in your recap here she says to him when they're talking about why would anyone want the master's bones she specifically says they're going to bring him back they're going to bring the master back to life and i seem to recall you telling me he was history how does she know that that's what they want the master's bones for yeah exactly that that's a little that's a little leapy there in the writing Right. Um, she should have. They probably should have played it more along the lines of her being like, you know, what the fuck are they doing with his bones? And then he could have said, well, there, you know, there is a revivification. Uh, exactly. Ritual. And she could have been like, what the fuck? What do you mean, motherfucker? You know, and right. Those lines could have easily been swapped and it would have made 100 percent more sense. Yeah. I'm sorry. But Go ahead. <laughs> it, but she is absolutely just boiling pissed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she says some. She basically, they all start arguing, um, and she says some pretty mean shit, and Xander finally says, okay, that's enough. You know, like, that's enough of this shit, and right then, uh, Principal Snyder walks up and interrupts the whole thing and and basically says, don't you have class, and looks at Giles and and, and a job, (laughs) and Giles is like, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 we'll we'll finish this uh, in the library later, kids, and... uh, so they all kind of disperse and uh he he says he can <laughs> Snyder says he uh he can smell bad things from Buffy's future and uh the aroma of expulsion and just the slightest whiff of jail. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Giles is just like, God, what you're such a dick. You know. <laughs> Basically, that's the that's you know, that's yeah the impression he's giving off. Um so after this, now we're, this is after school and they've gathered up in the library 
and kind of doing some research. And uh, that's when he finds this spell uh, that could be used to bring the master back. He finds it in a book and he's kind of reading it. And it requires, obviously, the bones and the blood of the one closest to him. And he just kind of doesn't understand. And Buffy's like, well, that's got to be me because we were the close, you know, we killed each other. Uh, We were, that that brings closeness. You know, we were pretty close. And um, Xander says, um, well, I don't have it in my notes. He said something. Right before the rock comes through, flying through the window, he said something like, "Oh, let me see." Like if, if only we knew, it. if only we knew something. And then this rock literally comes busting through the glass, and Buffy catches it. And uh, uh, he says, "Let's see. I think I have it in my notes here." You go ahead and do that, and I'll, I'll go. Uh, uh, he says, "Well, is there anything on when the on when the ceremony might take?" But and, it might take place, yeah. And okay. that's when the rock comes through. And the, the rock window. literally comes through the window right then, and Buffy catches it, and it's got a bracelet wrapped around it, and she goes, "That this belongs to Cordelia. And she takes the bracelet off, and there's a note, and uh, she reads the note. Um, basically says, you know, come to the bronze before it opens, or they're going to kill Cordelia. And, uh, well, <laughs> the note says, yeah, go ahead, or, go ahead. The note says, or we make her a meal. And Xander says, they're going to cook her dinner. <laughs> yeah, they're going to cook her dinner. And literally everyone in <laughs> the library gives him a look. And he's, he's like, like, okay, like, I'll pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> go <ahead>. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, she's, uh, everybody, they all realize it's, this is a fucking trap. And Buffy's like, Buffy doesn't care. And she's like, and you're you're not going. And they're like, what do you mean we're not going? And she's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, watch you three and fight my for my life at the same time. And, you know, that's when Willow's like, well, what about the rest of the note? And Buffy says, what re- rest of the note? And she says, the part that says, P.S., this is an obvious trap. It's a trap. <laughs> yeah, it's a tarp. And uh, she's like, she just doesn't care. And she's like, you know, this is my fight, and that's just the way it is. And she turns around, grabs her stuff, and poof, out the door she goes to go, uh, obviously, go to the bronze and uh, do some slayage. And so, I, will, I'm, I was going to say, we finally, someone finally in the episode, and it's Willow, asks Buffy what's wrong with her. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I did miss that part. Yeah. She's like, what? Basically, she's like, what in the fuck is with you? You know, she doesn't get an answer, but, you know. Right, right. At least she poses the question. Yeah. So, Um, oh, go ahead. uh, I was going to, I was going to pick up with the uh, alley outside the bronze, unless you wanted to. No, go ahead. Uh, Oh, I thought I was going to. (laughs) I'll take it, and you can take nope, it. Here we go. I'm, I'm okay. there. Okay. So we're outside the bronze, and Buffy's walking towards the door, and she senses Angel, because Angel's right behind her. <laughs> <laughs> her senses are very attuned. Very attuned. Uh, unlike Willow and Xander, who... Yeah, who have a <laughs> literally <laughs> nose hairs on their cheeks, and yeah. Um, and she... She's like, you know, being stalked really isn't a turn on for girls. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. And uh, Bless he tells you her, <laughs> thank you. And uh, he tells her, you need help, someone to watch your back. And she's says, sure, you don't mean my neck. And uh, he he walks around in front of her, kind of gets in her face a little bit. And he's like, why are you riding me? And she tells him she doesn't trust him. And uh, why are you know, riding be- me, bro? <laughs> and she she tells him it's she doesn't trust him. And he's a vampire. And like he gives her he gives her a look, uh, look a little hurt. Also a little bit like, yeah, but 
what's changed between when I was a vampire <laughs> when you want season. Health, yeah. and when I'm a vampire now and you're yep. being a bitch. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um and she's all like, Oh, I'm sorry, was that offensive? Should I say undead American? <laughs> and which is weird because he's fucking Irish. Yeah, exactly. He's not an American, so <laughs> um and he he's like, you know, you can't do this alone. You have to trust someone. And she says she trusts herself. And he tells her she's not as strong as she thinks she is. And uh she steps up. Yeah, bro. Yeah, she steps up and she's like, Do you think you can take me? And he's all he's like, like, What the fuck are we? What? What are we yeah. doing? He literally, like, that's the all he says is what, but literally the look on his face is like, I, Hold up. Like, the how did we fuck get It's the... going on right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> did I step into another fucking dimension? <laughs> and she starts to taunt him. Yeah. Oh, and she's like, She's like, Come on, kick my ass. And he's like, right. Yeah, so you never. Am I, where are we right now? <laughs> right, he's like, she's like, you've never thought about it. What if it came down to a fight? You're a vampire. Me, I'm the Slayer. You must have wondered. Let's find out. And he's like, it's like the fuck. I'm, I came here I'm, to help. Like what? He's like, he's like, I'm not gonna fight you. And she just keeps going. She's like, come on, kick my ass. And then he's like, you know what? Uh, I'm done with you, bitch. Yeah, he's like, don't you have somewhere to be? Yeah, and she's like, like, yeah, I do. Yeah. And he's like, well, you're wasting your fucking time. Just yeah. get going. Get going. Yeah. Just get Hit, kick fucking rocks already. Um, And she tells him to stay out of his way, out of her way and walks around him and heads into the bronze. And he's like, deuces, happy to oblige. And he pieces out. <laughs> Except he's immediately there. Right. <laughs> in the next scene. Right. So, um, which makes no sense because he's totally like, yeah, fine, no problem. Right. See you later. And like you said, we cut inside the bronze and there uh, he is. <laughs> we see Buffy coming in and there's Angel right behind her. Right behind her. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Buffy's, you know, that's not Cordelia. And vamp- the, there's a vampire turns around and she's like, vamp's like cordelia couldn't make it buffy of course you know where is she vampire won't tell her and angel says he doesn't like the situation and uh buffy's like or he says he doesn't like this and buffy's like don't like what and angel says there's the bait but where's the hook and the vampire attacks and feebly feebly buffy like makes quick work of her and has her pinned on the ground and um she's like you're right why would they send just one and we cut to the library and giles is continuing to do research and willow is saying that she still thinks they should have gone with buffy and xander is like you know, we should probably be at, at a safe distance. Buffy's about to lose it. And Willow's like, you know, you know it's a trap. And it's a Giles, trap. there's a trap. <laughs> and uh, Giles, of course, stumbles across the translation um, for what he's been looking for. And uh, he says, um, closest to the master actually translates as nearest physically the the person or persons who were with him when he and he looks up and he says it is a trap <laughs> <laughs> just not and, and at that point several vampires appear on the upper level of the library and yeah giles is like it just isn't for buffy yeah so we cut back to the bronze again and uh she hands off the vampire to Angel and tells her, you know, don't kill her unless you have to. And uh, he's like, where the fuck are you going? And she bails, <laughs> basically. And she gets to the school and to the library, busts in the library doors. And and obviously there was a uh, scuffle, a situation here because uh, there's 
chairs broken, turned over, tables, you know, there's just, there's a, it's a huge mess. And a hand reaches up and, and grabs one of the overturned tables and pulls itself up, and it's Xander. And he's pretty bloodied. He's got quite a bit of blood, you know, on his face, coming out of his nose, his mouth, everything. So for whatever reason, they decided to uh, kick his ass but leave him alive, which doesn't sound very villainish to me, but okay. <laughs> Um, so he, he's pissed, very pissed because, you know, he's like, if you had just worked with us and trusted us, you know, this would have never happened. We, you know, we would have all been together, blah, blah, blah. And, um, he, he says a line here and it's like, whoa, that escalated. But he's like, if anything happens to Willow, I'll kill you. And I was like, damn. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, he's, so he's, he's clearly, he is pissed and realistically, like he would stand a chance killing Buffy. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll kill you. And she's like, oh, okay, Xander Harris, what are you going to do? Kill me with your creep. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, you know, the, they discussed the fact that the vampires are collecting those who were in the same room with him when he died. So that's Giles, Willow, Cord- Cordelia, and Miss Calendar. And, um, and she's like, we gotta, you know, she's like, we have to find out where they've been taken. So we cut back to the, to the bronze. And now Xander and, uh, Buffy are there with Angel and the captured, uh, Tara, the vampire. And, Buffy's, you know, basically beating her up, roughing her up, um, you know, demanding to know where the hell they are. And she's like, you know, she's taunting them. Ha ha ha. You're too late. Your friends are dead. Blah, blah, blah. So at one point, Buffy grabs her and flips her over onto um, the pool table and holds her down and takes rips the, the cross off her neck that she wears and puts it puts it in this chick's mouth and clo- holds her mouth shut and you see steam and smoke and everything come out of her mouth and she's like oh i'm going to kill you she's like but it's all about what's going to happen between now and then we have so much time and she pulls the cross out and she's like now where are they and uh you know angel and xander are just kind of looking at each other like Damn. So, <laughs> like, some this is escalated. <laughs> like, I realize this bitch is a vampire, but that's some <laughs> fucked up shit. That's some Geneva Convention breaking shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, we now cut to, uh, to the factory. And the master's bones are laid out on a table. Perfectly, I might add. Like, it looks like a perfect skeleton that might have been purchased from a prop shop. Um, because it is perfect. Uh, and the annoying one, I'm sorry, the anointed one, uh, brings out the, the preacher vampire. Absalom. Uh, Absalom. That was his name. Yeah. I knew it was like a weird biblical name, but I couldn't. <laughs> anyway, he, uh, brings him out, uh, in a box of materials for the re, uh, vivification ceremony, uh, a knife and, you know, other creepy uh, implements of, of torture and revivification. Uh, and we, that's when we see, um, everybody, you know, Giles, um, Miss Calendar, Cordy and Willow, they're hanging, uh, by their ankles and they vamps pull a chain and they, they come across and they stop them hanging them just above the master's, uh, bones and, and, uh, Basically, the preacher vampire just describes that, you know, they're going to, long story short, they're going to slit their throats. Their blood's going to pour onto the master's bones. They're going to do this spell, and that's going to give him life. That's going to, their deaths are going to bring him life. Yep. Um, and so that's that's the long and the short of it. And let me flip my page here. They, uh. Xander Willow, or I'm sorry, Xander, Buffy, and Angel get into the factory and they they see what's going on. Um, 
so they, she starts making a plan and she's like, okay, you two, you get everyone out. And, um, and Angel's like, okay, but we need you to distract the vamps. You know, how are you going to do that? And she's, and she slowly turns to him and she says, I'm going to kill all of them. That ought to distract them. Yeah. I mean, as far as distractions go, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. So, uh, then what happens, James? So then, oh, hold on. So then we cut to Absalom and he's holding a, a long curved knife, knife, uh, a cookery, I believe it is called. Mm -hmm. It is indeed. And he is reciting the revivication ritual. And, uh, the vampires are reciting certain parts of it after him. Um, and Buffy attacks. And yeah. she, uh, uh, I mean, the, this whole next sequence is, is literally Buffy uh, attacking and killing the vampires. Yeah, one by one. She's just going through them like a buzzsaw, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, meanwhile, she's um, definitely working out some of those some of those issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, meanwhile, as she's taking on the 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 underling vampires, the anointed one, um, uh, and Absalom get the fuck out of the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> the anointed one. As soon as he sees he like the very beginning of this, as soon as he even sees Buffy, he's like, fuck this deuces. I'm out. And he just, he just, he's gone. He's like, fuck it. Plan episode over. I'm out. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, Angel and Xander, um, save, uh, um, uh, Giles, Jenny and Cordelia um, and Willow. Um, the once they're saved, um, you know they're all making sure everyone's okay. Um, uh, where are we? Um, yeah, uh, and then. Giles asks where Buffy is and Xander um, still holding Willow unconscious says she's working out her issues and um, we cut down to Buffy and she's still fighting one of the remaining underlings and uh, it's it's the porn stash guy by the way <laughs> yeah um, and Absalom shows back up and he's got a big sledgehammer with him and he yells enough and Buffy turns back to look at him and the other vampires get back up and Absalom basically tells her, you know, he's going to kill her. He's going to grind her into a sticky paste and hear her beg before he smashes in her face. And, uh, <laughs> she's like, so are you going to kill me or are we just making small talk? And <clears throat> Absalom raises the sledgehammer and starts... And like a classic movie villain, screams like a buffoon and just comes running, <laughs> running at towards her. Yes. As the other one does the same thing from the and, other direction. Yes. Um, and of course, she, she's got a... There's a tall wooden torch uh, on the floor in front of her. Um, so, of course, she... Uh, breaks it and you know does a couple turns of it in her hands and um each vamp uh one vampire impales himself on the end of it and uh, bursts into ash and uh absalom runs into the burning end and he is set on fire and he backs away screaming and as he's engulfed in flames and um he makes a last attempt to to kill Buffy and raises the sledgehammer over his head and um, 
but the flames engulf him and he burns up and the sledgehammer falls to the floor and um buffy drops the the torch and looks over to at the master's skeleton and we cut back up to everyone above and willow's awake and she says it's over and xander says no it's not and we cut back to below and buffy's picked up the sledgehammer and she walks over to the master's skeleton and she fucks that skeleton up yeah she grinds it into to a sticky paste yeah and, and i'm like why the fuck wasn't this done to start with why would you keep the bones of this old ancient powerful vampire like the first thing i would have done is when when i when we noticed that it didn't turn all to dust as i would have said we need to destroy those fucking bones like grind them up in a fucking grinder into ash and just sprinkle them yep but, you know and so everyone she basically does and everyone's watching her and she's laying waste to the master's bones and angel and, and begins really losing it and crying and angel comes up behind her and she drops the sledgehammer to the floor and she's crying and um he tells her it's okay and they hug and she leans into him and cries into his shoulder and we cut to school the next day and what's happening there well uh they're in class or uh, i'm sorry to, to start with it's uh cordy and miss calendar walking across the uh, lawn of the school there and Cordy's talking about how traumatized she is and um, that you just can't get that out and blah, 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 blah. Well, it's not visions or thoughts. It's stains. It's stains in her clothes is what she's talking about. And Miss Calendar's like, yeah, nearly being killed by a vampire uh, cult is uh, nothing compared to the stains, you know. And But, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's Cordelia being Cordelia. And, um, and we, we see... Uh, Buffy and Giles walking across as well. And she's basically like, how can I ever face him again? You know, after everything I've done and said, and, you know, I was such an idiot. And, and he's like, well, you know, I'm not saying you were in the right that you weren't wrong, but you know, it's, it's, it was, you made a mistake. It's not the end of the world. You know, if they're, they're your friends. They're going to, they're going to take you back. And, blah, blah, blah. And, and she's like, you know, I don't know. And she doesn't seem convinced. She's put it that way. And she, bell rings to signal, get your ass to class. And she's like, well, I gotta go. So she goes to class knowing that, you know, Xander and will are going to be there and she just doesn't know how to, how to, how she's going to react. And she walks into class and, um, walks over and sees Willow and Xander. Um, sitting there and uh let me play this clip because i think it's a i think it's a pretty good uh clue as to their relationship we saved you a seat there's a rumor going around that uh mr cox is the most boring teacher in the entire world like i think he won a belt or something like yes well i hear he nods off a lot so that's a plus so we bronze in it tonight? Wednesday's kind of beat. Well, we could grind our enemies into talcum powder with a sledgehammer, but gosh, we did that last night. So, um, yeah, that's, I thought it was pretty, pretty good scene there. It just shows that they've basically, you know, they love Buffy. She's their friend and they're going to forgive her. They're going to forgive her. She, they realize now that she was going through some, some rough shit and uh you know life's a bitch so but we have one little final scene where we cut back to uh that factory where the where the big fight scene was yes and and the annoying one has shown back up yes and he's assessing the damage done by buffy and looks around him at all the pieces of the master (laughs) master's bones around and he says i hate that girl yeah and that's it credits 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 roll credits roll 
And the credits roll. And the credits roll. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's jump right into our our uh, our uh, little uh, subcategories here. Uh, monsterology. Nothing of note in this episode, obviously. Um, just he who shall not be named, and the writers expanding their own established vampire lore with the introduction of this revivification ritual which is very easy to say so easy to say so easy to say um our body count this week is six so a lot of dustings i mean you can clearly tell that they got that season two money baby every every all our body counts this week are dustings. We have the unidentified vamp at, at in the cold open, staked by Buffy. Um, the one, two, three, four vampires in the factory staked by Buffy, and then Absalom was set on fire, but he did he did go okay. up in dust. So, um, those those four vampires. Uh, I did find their names listed as Walt, Jane, Ned, and Bob in <laughs> in one place, but I, I don't know where they got that information. Somebody probably but, just made that up. You know, probably. The you know the probably. internet. Um, let's see, a little behind the scenes. Uh, as you already mentioned, David, David Boreanaz played the master in the dream sequence of this episode. Um, uh, the episode pulled in a Nielsen rating of 2.9 million households uh, when it originally aired, but scored a higher 3.1 million rating when it was rebroadcast in November of 97. Wow. So, um, our, uh, I'm tossing in a, a new category uh, this season because it's going to be happening more frequently. Um <laughs> I'm calling it bronze bands, uh, we're because we are going to see more bands, yeah, uh, oh yeah, appearing yeah. at the bronze starting this season. And in my opinion, the music gets better now as the season, as this season goes along, and subsequent seasons. I think the music, I just feel like that season, those season one <laughs> songs and bands is like, oh, this is painfully bad. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Uh, so our bronze bands for this episode, as we did mention earlier, was Chibo Mato. Uh, our music for this episode, um, It Doesn't Matter by Alison Krauss and Union Station, um, was played. Uh, that is a song that was playing when Angel left Buffy's bedroom uh, for the first time. Um, Chibi, Chibi Mato... I had two songs in this episode, uh, Spoon and Sugar Water, uh, both played during their appearance at the Bronze. Um, And we had two pieces of original music as composed by Christoph Beck, Buffy Saves Friends and Smashing the Bones. Uh, I've also decided to rename Goofs and Gaffs to Goof-em-ups and Oopsies. (laughs) <laughs> okay all right i like it i, like it. I was in, i was just in a silly goofy mood all right i like it i like it uh wh- when joyce drives buffy to school uh in the morning after her nightmare mm-hmm. uh buffy's wearing a pink shirt but when she is as at school she's wearing a white tank top yeah, and then the next day she's wearing her pink shirt again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, uh, for... I got a, I got a couple. Sure, lay them on uh, me. Um, in, in case we didn't, I we you might have mentioned this. I don't remember the title. You know, when she was bad, that comes from the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem. Oh, okay. Um, where it's the the quote is, and when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. That's that's where that comes from. Gotcha. Uh, you you mentioned about David Boreanaz playing the master. Yep. Um, there was something else I wanted to I wanted to um, 
I, I guess well, I've lost it. So yeah, that was it. <laughs> uh, is it is it anything oh. to do with Absalom? No, no, okay. it was uh, her father, Hank. Yes, this is the last time that he appears, other than in either flashbacks or hallucinations. He does never appear. He never appears again as you know, like re- the right. real Hank. So I think isn't. I think there is one episode in the future where it is where it is him. I think I could be wrong. Well, according to my trivia here. Yeah. Okay. That's it's not, but you, you could be right. Um, I thought I had read, I thought I had read that, that it was all flashbacks and hallucinations until one specific episode in the future, Hmm. but that, that I could, I could have misread that too. So, um, uh, as- and also this is kind of Cordelia's adoption into the Scooby gang. Um, she's not nearly as heavily involved or anything, right. but she kind of becomes the, you, you know, the, the outside, like the she, fourth, the fourth stooge kind of. Yeah. Deal. I, I think from here on out, she starts working with them more, A lot more. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Still kind of limited capacity in the beginning, yeah. but um, so Absalom um, in the Bible, it, it's a name from the Bible. He was the third son of David, who, of course, was the king of Israel um, with Makah, daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. Um, Easy for you to say. Yeah. Uh, he. uh in Samuel fourteen twenty five, he's described as the most handsome man in the kingdom. Um, Absalom. Yeah, he. Well, this fucking Absalom is not the most handsome man in the kingdom. No, uh, he eventually he's got a broke, five head. He don't have a forehead. Um, he was eventually he eventually rebelled against his father and was killed during the Battle of Ephraim's Wood. I'm so, sure you sure it wasn't the Battle of Foreheads. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I'm I'm sure I'm sure our Absalom just took the name on at some point. Yeah. He's he's clearly without having any backstory on him at this point. Um, he's he's clearly at some point in his life uh, a preacher of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Oh, yeah. You can you can get. He was definitely of the clergy. Right. So I would imagine That's preaching and hearing his own fucking voice. Right. So I would imagine after his his first death, he he adopted the name Absalom. Yeah. For whatever reason. I went to school with an Absalom. Did you really? Hmm? Interesting. Guy. Big, big guy. Strong. Very strong. Yeah. You got to be with a name like Absalom. Yeah. I mean, strong, like freakish strong. Um, yeah. So that's all I have. Uh, do you have anything else? I got nothing. Um, well, then let's. Why don't we rate and give our final thoughts? Let's Jeremy, rate. Jeremy, you tell me how many enemies' bones ground into powder with sledgehammers would you give this episode? I'm going to give this a four. Four? Okay. I okay. Uh, I really like this episode, um, which I do most of the episodes in, in seasons two and three, as I've said. But... I just feel like, oh man, yeah, here we go. Now we're getting into the groove. Man, the writing just seems like it's on another level, deeper, more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just more. It's it, like a lot of the scripts from last season seemed like generic scripts, like they could have been applied to almost any type of show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. The, now it seems like from here on. Uh, like the scripts are really meant for this show and these characters and, you know, from the dialogue to, to everything, you know? Right. And so, yeah, I, I really like the episode. I, I didn't have any major complaints, little things that we talked about, you know, um, as we were going through, um, like, you know, these two lines probably should have been switched in this, you know, that type of thing, but yeah, you're, you're probably going to notice that in, in seasons two and three, it's going to be a lot of high scores for me. Um, okay. I think, I think they've just, uh, like I said, this is when the show really, I think starts, 
it's it's this flowing right right like we like we said at the beginning um as as much as as much as we do acknowledge that the show from the get go knew what it wanted to be and knew what it was trying to do mm-hmm. and it it was successful at that in the in the first season i i agree i feel that the second season is really where those ideas all coalesce oh yeah and, and you've got um not that you didn't in the first season but i think you've got more talent behind the scenes that mm-hmm. that is helping helping those ideas um that were that were established in the first season come to uh fruition and and coalesce together in this second season yep so 100 percent all right james how many former clergy members uh turned vampire would you give this episode uh i i am going to rate it three i'm oh. i'm going one less uh than you just to be contrary i know i know just, how you are just to be a contrary just to be contrary um because i am a contrarian by nature okay um no um I enjoyed the episode. I thought it was a good episode. I don't know that this was season premiere material. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think, and I, I realized that part of the problem is um, they only had 12 episodes to work with in the first season because it was a mid season replacement, mm-hmm. but this feels very much like it could have been, um, part of uh a uh, a second half of the first season sure had had the season gone on Mm -hmm. um i don't know that it's a good idea to uh bring your second season back and have your main character be so utterly unlikable uh, for, also, for the, that, that's a it's a bold ballsy decision it is it is um and that's the kind of thing that he who must not be named likes to likes to do so yeah um I, but overall i just like i said it, it is a good episode i do it i enjoy the episode every time i see it um i don't i don't feel like it was a season it was a season premiere i feel like I feel like Buffy dealing with uh, what had happened in Prophecy Girl could have been uh, an ongoing storyline. Sure. Um, uh, as far as making bold moves go, um, and I think that might be more my issue with it is we premiered the season. Our main character was utterly unlikable for the entire episode and then we get that switch around at the end where she's Buffy again. Yeah. And let's not gloss over the fact that, that Sarah Michelle Gillard just crushed this. Oh, she did. She, She, I mean, she, what she always pretty much does, but I mean, going completely against uh, type, you know, completely against who her, the character was, Right. And, and um yeah, she smacked this way out of the park. Um I I feel like this honestly, I feel like this would have been better set up as a season finale to an extended season 1. Yeah, or or maybe a mid-season type break. Right. type thing maybe where we're like whoa she's changed and we have to wait till we come back to get a resolution to the whole right. thing you know yeah right. i can see that so, something where uh at, once the master is defeated uh in prophecy girl we we continue on from that you see the anointed one rebuilding his forces so to speak to do the reviv- revivification ritual um, you watch Buffy's, uh, uh, not, ne- not necessarily descent into, but the slide into and the recovery from PTSD over an additional 
you know, 11 episodes or so. And and this episode is the culmination of that. Okay, yeah. That That's just my take on it. And again, I understand, you know, we're working with, with you know, an issue where the first season was short because it was a mid-season replacement. So coming into the second season, you kind of have to wrap up some things, but also uh, establish some new things and kind of keep going from there. So, but, Well, I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> but yeah, overall rating a three. All righty. Well, uh, any closing thoughts? No, sir. I really don't either. I'm just, I'm glad I'm happy to be back. I'm, I'm, gl- I'm super glad we're into season two now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't wait for what's to come. Like you said, especially for me in a couple of episodes. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, join us next week for, we will be reviewing season two, episode two, some assembly required. Yes, sir. Uh, don't forget to uh, visit us on all our socials. We can be found uh, on Facebook at Slade Podcast, uh, on Twitter at Slade Podcast, on TikTok at Slade Podcast. Uh, you can watch uh, the uh, uh, podcast on YouTube. Um, search uh, Slade the Buffyverse Revisited. Uh, we've got I think all but two of our first season episodes uh, we recorded video for. Yeah, probably. If, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, we went to the video. We embraced video pretty early on, I think. Yeah. Um, if you're a new listener, uh, obviously, you know, you can find our old season one episodes wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, uh, and again, also on YouTube. Um you know, and you can always uh, email us at uh, Buffy Revisited at gmail.com. Um, drop us a line. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think of the our show. Let us know what you think of Buffy. Um, we'd love to start some discussions with fans about episodes. So, oh yeah, you know, feel free to post on the Facebook, on the tick, or on the Twitter. Um, you know, let, we'll jump into it. We'll we would love to discuss uh, any and every episode with you guys uh, and, and get your thoughts and opinions on them. So. And tell me how pretty I am. You're very pretty. (laughs) All (laughs) right. With that being said, we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us. I've been one of your hosts. I am Jeremy. I'm your other host, James. Bye. Bye.